I thought I'd try and follow this up, hopefully without disturbances this time. I've asked people if they can hear me talking, obviously they can't. And I get questions, knocks on the door, so there's a sign outside, do not disturb at the moment. Very frustrating. Anyway, um, moving forward, hopefully, with the uh, more information on soy and... This is uh, basically you know, a lot of the conspiracy crap out there, like I said, does not look at data of how much over how much time, the ins and outs whatsoever. It is pathetic, it's fear based, and some of that seems to be gay phobia, uh, and among other things. It's funny how Alex Jones is actually showing all the signs of low T, by the way. And, you know, a, a good cycle of testosterone does ha actually help you burn body fat. He's very obese. Um, yeah. And uh, there is, you know, he's stressed. Very uh, emotional, stressed. I was a bit stressed just now, but uh, that's, I got my reasons. But you, you know the the jump up and down in his seat, ranting, kind of uh, typical Alex Jones. Um, I think there's a lot of projection going on here. There actually, his accusations trying to cover for something, um, trying to look like the tough guy, the alpha male, all this bullshit. Um, he's not alpha at all. He's People like drama because they latch on to it with because they want social justice, yeah, and everyone wants social justice, right? So, with that in mind, he gets a lot of views because there's the emotional aspect to it. People like that get views, but they don't get educated. They still feel frustrated afterwards without an educated solution, but they go and say, oh, so it must be true because uh, people like Alex Jones get a lot of views and he must be credible because he's very successful, blah, blah, right? It's very cyclical, goes round and round, and where it ends, nobody knows. And regardless of that, and get into like the, there's the certain the best way I can understand it. There's receptor areas on our cells. Um, these are called alpha and beta for different reasons, other than alpha and male and all that. They're totally different reasons. Uh, alpha and beta sites. One's primary, another secondary. From what I can understand, trying to pull this apart. And in the last video, I talked about estradiol converting the testosterone to estrogen that's wrong uh it's aromatase uh estradiol is a type of estrogen uh it's aromatase if there's a lot of body fat and aromatase will be quite high the more fat you got the higher it will be estrogen in men is not a problem it's natural but it needs to be lower than your t levels for it to have a natural balance and cycle going on and the, obviously the flip side for women. women. Um, but there's different types of estrogens, different types of testosterones, and if you have excessive amounts of the one that isn't normally utilised by our cells, for our cells, like phytoestrogens, and you are already low on the other ones that are normally used, your body's going to use those, those phytoestrogens. So if there's already an imbalance and then you introduce these phytoestrogens at large amounts, you're going to get detrimental side effects. But this is aggravating a side effect that is already there without finding the cause, and the cause would not be soy. See how that works? It's very complicated, right? And yeah, some of the complexities of the papers out there or how when things can... can cause another and how one thing convert to another it is it does give me a bit of a headache looking through it because i'm not an expert i'm not a biologist i am not um a doctor like but uh 
I thought I'd cover the, some of these things, trying to actually understand it from a scientific perspective rather than running around like, they're turning all the frogs gay and all this bullshit, right? It really is pathetic. Um, so somebody called Michael Greger, who's a medical doctor, we had some information from him. Not personally, I was just you know, in my searching. Uh, looks like uh, Michael Greger is also on YouTube on some videos. I'll see if I can get an article put out. And I'll put sources below here anyway. Um, trying to get this out. Uh, it's... There's so much misinformation out there. It, it is phenomenal on this. And we have women fearing that their estrogen levels might be too high. Men fearing that they might turn them effeminate because of soy products. And it's inconclusive right across, you know, mostly it's conclusive that the soy proteins are actually beneficial and healthy for you. It's actually best of both worlds. It seems like in some ways it's actually and estrogenic as well as anti-estrogenic in, in particular you know t again depending on your balances already prior to the presence of some of these things that are not not again they're not normally utilized right uh to it's not their primary focus it's not your cells primary focus to use those and plant matter across the board has these phytoestrogens. So soy tends to have more from what I'm looking at than many others, um, which spurned on concern from people. There's always a there's professional debate and there's unprofessional bullshit debate um, that doesn't hold itself up. So there's these receptors alpha and beta receptors on your cells that um, uh, take up your own natural estrogens like I said and they they prefer preferentially bind to either one of these things um, but if that's not present the body tries to adapt and use what else is there that's binding to that, which can cause potential problems down the line. Um, so the effects of soy depends on the, your relative balance already. I kind of already said that, I'm kind of repeating myself here, but. Um, In some ways, it, it can have pro-estrogenic effects and anti -estrogenic. Again, I'm repeating myself, but it's just just to clarify, uh, I've got some article in front of me now, and I'm gonna. It's like the pro-estrogen would be strengthening the bone. Uh, look through the article a bit. Um, There's women with soy products. They show, you know, they they gone to studies to show reduce estrogen effects in your breast, and uh, patients with cancer patients as well reduced and estrogen effects in breast cancer is you know high estrogen can proliferate breast cancers the, the studies actually on that and proven and so this is a positive conspiracy nuts don't talk about that there's people who are body builders and regular gym goers who are men who are not feminine but they are pro soy proteins but not over the top and on the other side of that, there's obsession of being excessively male or whatever. What the, this ego, egocentric, toxic masculinity bullshit? Who are regular gym goers? Um, 
no pain, no gain, ego tripping craziness that uh, uses diets that are obsessing over having the right proteins and primarily meat, uh, taking raw egg as well. And raw eggs is not a good thing. This is a dietary cholesterol will go right up the chart, the egg yolk particularly, um, which is detrimental because for dietary cholesterol, there's other ways the body ends up with cholesterol uh, presence in the body that is not a direct result of the input, but it's a chain reaction. Your hormones are made out of the base of cholesterols, uh, but don't that doesn't mean you need to eat a lot of fatty, cholesterol-rich things. Um, that will be detrimental to your circulation and uh, circulate bad circulation. Clogging veins has been related to uh, erectile dysfunction, and men who experience that assume that it's low because of low T, and not you know try to do their self medication, self doctoring, rather than actual actually finding out with their doctor and getting blood tests and, and so on, right? Uh, there's that problem. It's crazy. It's a mess. And all this is is a protein that has some estrogenic effects. But it's not that clear. Yeah, It's anti-estrogenic as well. Enough... If, for the human body, the male human body, or, or female, if there's presence of es estrogen in a man, then it's probably highly likely that if it's so much, that uh, probably means that well, we're going to stop creating more testosterone then until that subsides. Because the only reason there would be so much is because there would be a lot of testosterone that is converted to that. But then, if you've got other chemicals and foods that are blocking the reception, the receptor cells, the, the, the receptors on your cells, sorry, to utilize it, then you've got free testosterone, not bind it to your cells. And, you know, one thing that uh, basically is blocking the take-up would be aromatase, which also converts, I think, I don't know if it's entirely wrong, aromatase, if you lower your aromatase, your T levels do go up. I know that much from what I've been looking at. And there are certain things in, in certain veg and foods actually in mushrooms as well have anti-aromatase effects temporarily blocking the side effects or the production of it or the presence rather um you know doctors would tell you you know you eat more of this less of that or whatever in a you know a nutritionist well and Many nutritionists out there do look into the science, the actual science, and but the crazy crowd don't. The crazy crowd, like Alex Jones, is, has a supplement that he wants to be a snake oil supplement, snake oil salesman, selling you that. So let's create this conspiracy. So then he uh, sells more. Uh, fear is a great sales motivator, right? So some a bit more information in front of me. I want to scroll scroll through. Um, there's a lot here. Hold on. Um, here we go. There's been thousands, actually thousands, of breast cancer st survivors studies on that. Um, they put them all together. The, the, the women who ate soy lived longer, even if they still died, you know, uh, died from cancer problems after. But they, they also showed reduction in tumor. Um, 
the the even outside of the suffering outside of the cancer patients women lived longer who didn't have these issues anyway so it's good for the women um again there's potential side effects are very beneficial for men with the anti estrogenic effects here in men men as well so it, despite having uh phytoestrogens which is like an estrogen there's some anti-estrogenic effects in soy of course there's conspiracy nets are not going to talk about that are they right so you get kind of like the best of both worlds if you will maybe um there's shown as a low lowering of those who sufferers of high blood pressure they introducing soy proteins has lowered their blood pressure as to exactly why i don't i don't know if they fully understand it yet but it, it's beneficial <laughs> right uh, so the 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 benefits are far outweigh any conspiracy or assumption that uh, there will be any adverse effect for a man All right so it depends on what tissue type we're talking about as well you know obviously better for reduction of estrogens in some tissues increasement of reception of estrogens in other tissues it's all of a complicated chain reaction different things here and all foods are like that all proteins and different enzymes uh, the, like the presence of um, like in initiation of a lot of processing for vitamin D will deplete your uh, magnesium levels again you know with Magnesium is also important, not just for the process of them, the other things as well. So, you know, human body is a very complicated machine, right? As I'm sure you'll agree. Um, it's like bean sprouts, they have these proteins in them as well. All right yeah you know, just reading something there um there's cheeses out there that are detrimental for your hormone levels uh that has been shown in dairy products as well there's side effects that have been shown for that and yet there's patients out there adamant there that they are taking these products like eat the cheese drink the milk and so on that um, affect estrogen levels to bring them up a little bit too high and they're cancer patients but they are uh, soy proteins are shown to be helpful in lowering estrogens that have aggravated uh, the tumours or whichever, particularly breast cancer. Right? They're, they're patients and they're still adamant that they, oh, I want my cheese, I want my milk, or whatever. It's crazy. Again, it's both depending on the tissue levels and depending on your hormone levels prior to taking these proteins, it can raise or lower your levels so i'm going to leave this as part two and you know i'll, I'll speak a bit more but uh, this this will be the last video i'm doing on this you know they're staying away from soy these patients very foolish but it's stunning
So uh, I'm looking at something now. Uh, so it's phytoestrogens, like the saying that they might cause the. Uh, they're not estrogen. They're, they're vaguely shaped like the estrogens that would fit into the receptors in your cells, which is why higher levels of them are actually taking away detrimental effects of high estrogen as well, like the, the natural estrogens that uh, for whatever reason might be too high and it's helped breast cancer patients, right? <laughs> So, you know, the reason, I'm, when you think about it, it's fitting into there. It's fitting into those receptors. So now it's blocked the natural estrogen from coming into those sites. So it's not as effective as the estrogen, but also if it's too high and it's too much all at once, it can it's known to aggravate the, the these cancers in breast tissue this is why it works it's just like no you're not coming in you're not doing your thing we're using this instead which isn't as effective but because it's not as effective it's actually a positive in that scenario in that case Whereas other cases, well, uh, regardless of cancers uh, outside of that, would be, oh, we're going to utilize all this because there isn't anything else. Well, why isn't there anything else? It's not because of soy, it's because of some other, uh, other causations. So causation is not correlation and vice versa. Correlation is not necessarily causation, right? So, you know, the natural estrogens, if they did get in those cells where the cancers are, it would drive the, the, the tumours to proliferate. So, soy proteins, you could say, save some women's lives. And... Yeah, it's helped men's health as well. So, you know, there isn't anything other than looking at extreme levels, stupid levels, obsessing over, I want loads of this and loads of that, then imbalances happen, right? Again, with the eggs, or too much, too much soy, too much is too much. But how much is too much by the conspiracy nutters is not something they talk about. So how do they know what the hell they're going to talk about at all? <laughs> yeah. We're just breathing in a smell of soy sauce. Is that too much? You know, they have no idea how to scientifically or even just analytically put this down into a detailed analysis that uh, even remotely points to something relating to proof. Is, is stupid, is regard is crazy. So I'm trying to scroll through something now. Um There's something else there. I want to get to a bit where more about men as well, because I can already hear the conspiracy nut is going. Oh, you've only talked about women being benefiting from it, despite the fact that I actually said it's actually some of it is like an anti-estrogenic effect as well. <laughs> Uh, no, that's not it. I'm just trying to look for this. Just 
scrolling down. This is a huge article. There's different papers. I'll link below this video. Um, so, you know, this is... It's black and white kind of thinking, really, with all this. It's like, too much soy. Um, it has phytoestrogen, therefore lower T. That's it. You know, has phytoestrogen, therefore presence of estrogen is going to decrease your T levels. No, it's not. Um, I've already explained anyway that it's not a natural estrogen as much as like what we would typically have utilized by ourselves. Scrolling down, something about men. It's never uh, a number of these proteins as well um, are estrogen like on their own, but with the presence of other things, you know, it's isolating, it's re reducing, it's reductionism. If it's on its own, it's very estrogen-like, potentially, but with the presence of other things, it's not. It's the same with testosterone on its own. is potentially just testosterone-like effects. But uh, aromatase and estradiol will, will have effects on that aromatase converting T into E, uh, testosterone into estrogen. Yeah. Uh, things do not work on their own, black and white, separate from each other. It's all a bigger picture. Yeah. So basically, if there was a reasonable level, not too high, not too low, but at some substantial level of a male cells taking up the phytoestrogen, it's actually beneficial because it's blocking the workings of the higher potential of having um, detrimental effects from estrogens in the male body any, anyway. Right? And during that, you know, that could be part of a medication, I, I, I guess. I mean, you know, educated guess. I don't know. I'm not going to condone that. I'm not going to, because I'm not a doctor, but um, theoretically, you could utilize that until you're actual natural T levels and estrogen levels balance back out. And all this can be done with blood, blood tests, right? Testing the serum and so on. I'll write an article on natural numbers on these tests. I've been down there. there. Uh, there's been a lot of studies and you know, measurements and things. Why? Because people are stupid. Because they blurted out this conspiracy and uh, it spurred on the, 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 the legitimate scientists to go and find out for sure. <laughs> Which, uh, I guess, in the long run, it's a good thing, right? Uh, see. There we go. 2008, there was the first. <laughs> Human studies and they studied these proteins on mice as well and other animals. Um, there we go. Uh, rodents, mice. Um, there was very different effects. Surprisingly so, despite them being a mammal and 
we're mammals, we're humans, uh, mammal, like, and but the rodents tend to process photoestrogens very differently to how we process them. To you know, the human studies who had different results. Uh, there was some fear or detrimental effects because of how they the they affected the mice and rats or whatever rodents they're doing this on. <laughs> uh, reading a bit more. So, you know, basically if you're a man or, or woman, I mean, men can get uh, breast cancer as well, you know, they, 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 we don't have breasts like a woman, no, but we still have a chest area, there's still tissues there, they, you can get cancers here and there, and uh, in those types of tissues, it's shown that estrogens can aggravate those tumours, right? Taking soy would help for men as well as women because of what I've already explained. You know, you, you block the cell's potential to receive any presence of estrogen because the phytoestrogen is, is plugged into the receptor and taken up the space, right? So there we go, there was a study between dairy industry and soy industry. Uh, this was a long, many years ago, 1970s. Yeah, dairy and other products is primarily, uh, soy is more popular much later, um, but this, study in the Philippines um, it, they it was an effort to get the Philippines to produce soy as an export product out of the Philippines uh, this is interesting yeah uh, product uh, shipping out to the United States and uh, dairy industry was riled up and said no way because it was an alternative so the dairy industry went, wanted their monetization and consumerism and, and and there was a this was a threat to that um there's a bit more here there we go they, they started accusing people of introducing soils various things that became political again uh, i don't alex jones even really bothered to look into that uh much but it might be part of his Bullshit bigger picture. <laughs> um, in 1980s, there was another attempt uh, to get soy into school lunch programs, for example, United States, and the dairy industry got the got on their high horse. <laughs> Interesting. And basically said no way there is a large kickback uh, so I guess uh, that's where the idea came from trying to me you know, typically again if you look at the bodybuilding industry particularly among the men they say oh you got to eat these meats to keep your protein levels up and yeah you know, eat the uh, get the milk you know, for calcium get the eggs and there's other proteins can be introduced that are soy based and just as beneficial potentially with the right ingredients of other foods maybe even more so and also there's good reason for the vegan crowd I think actually to be they have a good argument against uh, environmental detriment to the environment 
for you know, good reasons to move away from eating meats and farming animals to such a level that it's it's an environmental issue um not just with cow farts or whatever uh stuff out there that uh people have talked about because of methane levels but so many other ins and outs of farming in general and overly cultivating the land where things grow they are the ground and chemicals used in farming all this you know and i'm i'm an individual who grew up in a rural area and i'm not against supporting my local pro produce local farmers but there is ways to evolve i think and adapt uh, for those professions out there surely i'm gonna leave it at that again you know i will look into the actual amounts and numbers the measurements been done here and put that into an article at exploratingminds.com sometime on the blog uh there's a lot of writing going into uh an article based on a meditative practice that has its origins in ancient tibetan buddhism and it may even have arrived long before that as well uh it's an interesting one for sure um there's other things i don't want to say about it just yet um but uh when the time comes to talk about that one i'll talk about it yeah uh thanks for watching take care and i'll look forward to doing another video soon cheers bye